Aloha, everybody. I'm Mark Coleman, your co-host today of Talking Tax here on Think Tech Hawaii. Think Tech Hawaii. Um, my co-host is Tom Yamachika, president of the Tax Foundation of Hawaii, and we have a special guest today, Russell Ryan. He's uh, chief financial officer and co-owner with his lovely wife of uh, Highway Inn, which has two uh, restaurants, two restaurants, one in Ka'ako and the other one in uh, Waipahu. And they serve mostly Native Hawaiian foods. And the reason we're going to talk to him today is because uh, he was hit with a big tax bill unexpectedly uh, a year ago or so. Uh, and we're going to talk about why that happened and what we can do about it. He's one of many who were hit by this uh, surprising uh, request for money by the Tax Foundation of Hawaii. And it goes back to the COVID funding uh, era. When they were, when the federal government was and uh, the state were passing out lots of money to help businesses that were affected by the lockdowns, uh, the COVID lockdowns. So Tom Tom wrote an article about this very recently called uh, "Restaurants Getting Cooked," and and that was about how these many restaurants uh, were suddenly surprised by this big bill from the government, state government. Um, and and Tom, why don't you explain what what was going on about that? Sure. Thanks. Uh, um... Uh, for that uh, great introduction. Uh, what we've got today is basically an audit program uh, that was initiated by our state tax department. They're going after restaurants of all stripes, big ones, small ones, medium-sized ones. And, uh, and the key factor in that is that they took advantage of a program now, from the federal government called the Restaurant Revitalization Fund, or RRF. Um, you may recall that in the earlier days of the pandemic in 2020 or so, uh, the, the feds came up with some different relief programs, uh, including the Paycheck Protection Program, or PPP for short. So most businesses um, were able to take advantage of you know some, uh, some monies from that program. And... Uh, in 2021, when we had a new president, uh, it was kind of dis kind of um, deemed uh, necessary to help a, a certain a segment of the business population out, namely uh, restaurants and um, uh, I guess entertainment venues. So they had yeah. two new programs in yeah. 2021 called uh, RRS, which we just talked about. And the Shunyu, uh, the Shuttered Venue Operators Grant, so SVOG, and this is for uh, businesses that had to close down because of the pandemic, right. uh, because there were closure orders. Now, uh, what we're, uh, what brings us to the problem today is our uh, omnipresent general excise tax, which is pretty much levied on everything. Um, and in 2020. Uh, when the first couple of programs came out, uh, the Department of Taxation came up with some official guidance. Uh, this is what it looks like. If you can show the first slide, please. Yes, this is uh, what's called TIR, or Tax Information Release 2020-06, you know, a nice official document. Uh, it's uh, you know many, many pages long, but, but let's kind of cut to the chase here and go right to the... Um, uh, the section we need on page three. And let's zoom in on that a little bit. And it talks about general excise tax treatment. And it says, the general rule is that amounts received by a business that replace income are subject to GET. Thus, grants or other programs that replace or supplement income are normally subject to GET. However, in light of the severity of the economic impact of the COVID-19 pandemic, GET will not be imposed on payments received under uh, pandem pandemic unemployment assistance, loan amounts forgiven under PPP, which we've talked about, and um, economic uh, uh, EIDL, I think it's, it's emergency disaster loans, uh, all... all um, That's right, economic injury disaster loan programs. Right, I, I'm getting old here. Uh, I forgot what the I stands for. These these were all federal programs uh, to lessen the injury from the economic impact of the pandemic. 
of the lockdowns. Yeah, and, and the lockdowns associated with them. Okay, so this is kind of the you know the the rule book that we're playing with. So um, uh, to see kind of how that unfolded, uh, well, it, it, let's let's kind of note that this particular official statement was issued in 2020. Uh, and that was before we had uh, the RRS and uh, the SVOG pass, because those were in 2021 when we had a new president. Right. So the, uh, the guidance doesn't mention uh, RRS. So it, it can't, I mean, because it didn't exist yet. Yeah. But uh, uh, some of the auditors kind of take that omission as saying, well, you know, we, we talked about uh, PPP and EIDL, we didn't mention RRF at all, therefore it must be taxable. And and that's kind of how they have been hitting uh, these uh, these different restaurants. Uh, and and today we've got uh, one concrete example, and uh, and we have Russell here from Highway Inn to tell us about the on on the ground impact of what that meant, and uh, and 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 how the industry is taking us. Yeah. So yeah. What's been going on, Russell? Thanks, Mark and Tom, for bringing this to everybody's attention. Truly really appreciate it. And thanks for that uh, great explanation there. Um, as you mentioned, you know, when they came out with that that document, um, RRF didn't even exist. And in 2021, we applied for this um, additional funds, and we received it. And according to the the regulations, we spent the money uh, because we were told we had to spend it all, otherwise we'd have to give it back. So we duly went ahead, got the money and spent the money in the economy. Uh, so all of the people on whom we spent the money, they paid their GET to the state. So they, they got a piece of that money that we, that we gave to them. And our employees that benefited from the, um, the pay that we gave, they also paid state income tax. So we couldn't believe our eyes. It, it, and uh, Mark, it was about a month ago, not a year ago, that I opened this letter. Oh. And it's... Do you remember two and a half years ago when you got that money from the federal government? Now you owe us, um, you know, tax on that. Okay. We were astonished, of course. Uh, we were like, what? How, how did that, that happen? And of course, with the passage of time, I, I um, found Tom obviously on this because we're, we're, we're pretty disgruntled about it because we, we were told at the time that there would be tax due on this and, and of course coming right now in this time of the one time of the year in when it came as well, we're being asked to pull this money out of just our operating income today. And of course, you know, we're a small company, but we have budgets, we have, um, we have all of that stuff and we were never, ever, never, ever made aware in order to budget for this particular tax, which came along. And, and the thing which I find, um, interesting looking at how they've done it is the thing replacing revenue and somehow this RRF grant is being seen to be replacing revenue as opposed to paying costs like the PPP and the EIDL was. So I don't know how suddenly this one grant that's essentially the same thing is suddenly deemed as being revenue replacement as opposed to, um, costs. Yeah, that's a good the, point. Um, you, you, I mean, Russell, you were. That that's something that Tom brought up in his article, I believe. Uh, that 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 was the excuse that that we haven't talked about until you just brought it up. That the prior programs had to do with uh, meeting costs, and then this one they considered it to be replacing revenue, and so therefore they are assuming it doesn't have to be exempt. Yeah, I know that 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 happened um, when uh, one of our local news channels broke. Uh, you know, the, the, broke the story on this development, you know, they, they interviewed another Kailua restaurant who was uh, being zapped with the same issue. And, and they said, oh my God, you know, we, um, uh, we got PPP funds. Uh, they said it wasn't taxable. And, and now we get uh, one year later, uh, uh, additional monies from the federal government for RRF, you know, what's the difference? 
the you know the 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 state spokesperson on that particular program came out and said, well, uh, PPP was replacement of costs, uh, but I, I'm not really sure they were aware. But uh, under the RRF federal program, uh, you have to spend the money on approved approved items. You know the, the things that the federal government approves. If you don't, you have to give the money back. So I don't see how how different that is. Being uh huh. So they yeah, have yeah, properly, so it should be exempt under the GET under that right. The spirit of that letter, right? The only the only the only difference I was aware of having been the one that did all paperwork on all of these alphabet soup of uh, grants was um, was with the with the RRF. It was based upon revenue decline uh, during sort of one reference period to another. And the others were based on cost decline or costs that you experienced in that reference period. And, uh, you know, in the but that was only the initial amount of the grant, right? Yeah. That, well, that was just a means of calculating how much, you know, trying to get a ballpark on who, who owned what, because, you know, a small little restaurant is going to have less than a, than a big restaurant. And we all know in the restaurant business, revenue pretty much equals costs because of our profit margins. So skinny, you know, between you know, zero to 5%, um, you know, 5% being uh, a once in a blue moon profit margin that you get in this business. So revenue is equal to cost. So um, they're, they're, it's, pretty much, it's pretty much the same thing. And there's no logic in my mind as to why using, you know, a quick revenue calculation that is, is, is very, very easy to observe. I mean, revenue is much more easy to observe than cost because, you know, we all know from accounting that, you know, Costs, the costs can be, you know, paid in one period, but accrued in another, or you have depreciation, you have amortization, you have, you have payment plans. So it's really hard to determine what cost is it exactly in what period, but revenue is unambiguous. It was like, yeah, did you make, you know, $20,000 in this month, uh, in revenue? Yes, I did. You know, whereas, you know, costs are a little harder to, um, pin down. So I don't. You know, because of the speed with which this came out, we literally had, I think about five or six days to come up with our revenue numbers and it was impossible to do that with costs. So in, so in my mind, the revenue number was just a very quick and dirty, uh, way of getting, getting the size of getting that number, which was, you know, essentially, as I mentioned, a proxy for costs because of the low profit margins. And I don't think there was any intention on the, on the people who came up with this RRF grant that it was, it should be treated anything differently than any of the other grants. I think it's, well, you your, know, how, how did they react when you brought this up? Uh, to, you know, did they to go, oh yeah, well, what, what was their excuse to you? Oh, well, we were still in process. The only uh, information that I've gotten back from our accountant is, is, you know, they respectfully disagree with opposition, you know, essentially. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and well, uh, and, just for the record, um, uh, Jonathan Helton with the Grassroot Institute, which I work for as well, I'm the managing editor over there. He uh, checked with the Small Business Administration, and apparently more than uh, 1,100 Hawaii-based businesses received RRF grants for a total of $416.2 million, and at the excess rate, uh, the excise tax rate of four point of four percent, not counting county surcharges, the state realized about $16.6 .6 million dollars by taxing the locally distributed um, RRF grants. And so that was an average of about- Yeah, well, that's what they want. $14,500 per, per restaurant on average. I don't know where you fit in on that one, Tom, but, but that's a lot of money. And considering um, how, how everybody was so, you know, knocked over by the COVID uh, lockdowns, uh, you would have thought that they might've let that one go, but I guess not. So. Yeah, and it's all it's only back assessments. It's all back assessments. Uh, the money. The money assessment is going to be made for uh, for the year twenty twenty one. Yeah, and the money's already in the economy. We we spent it as we were advised to do. Uh huh. Yeah, and on and we we spent that money, and that GET is in the economy, so they've already received their tax from. Yeah. So you I heard haven't... operating under the idea that um, I mean, if you had known, you would have had to pay. 4% on the money we're bringing in from, from the grants, you would have put that aside probably, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I just put it aside and then been like, okay, well, I got to deal with this.
That's all cool. on top of the income tax we already spent on it. But well, apparently, um, Gary, uh, who's the the tax director's name? Uh, Gary, Gary Suganuma. Yeah, apparently he he. Um, you probably know this. I mean, I'm sure you know this, but he apparently has the power to unilaterally say, um, "Okay, we won't. You know, we'll we'll give you a refund." That's what you're seeking, right, Tom? Well. Uh... It was actually Gary's predecessor, uh, Isaac Choi, uh, in that position who came out with that tax information release uh, that we were talking about earlier. It's, it's, it's an official document. People can rely on it. Right. So, and, but Gary could extend the spirit of that unilaterally to these RRF grants. And well, I think, I think he already did. If he wanted to revoke it, he could have done so by now. But doesn't, but what I'm saying is, can he authorize reimbursements of, or refunds on those tax payments? That yeah, he can. He can just tell his tell his auditors, you know, uh, let's end this. Um, let's let's uh, apply the same principle to RRF and SVOG, uh, which I think is what they should do. Yeah, Jonathan, he said, yeah, he could do that. He could uh, he could just. Issue new tax information release stating that monies received from the SVOG and RRF programs are exempt from the excise tax. Boom, just like that. Um, but barring him doing that, then what? Legislature? Well, yeah. I mean, one of the one of the issues uh, that I guess they they may be dealing with is that there is no statutory exemption for this. Okay, so so he may feel himself compelled to tax it. Uh, in the absence of authorization from the legislature, well, that didn't stop his predecessor. Oh yeah, uh-huh. um, and, uh huh. And it, it may have been, it may have been kind of a factor of, uh, or influenced by the fact that in 2020, uh, our our legislature wasn't in session. They only you know met for maybe a few weeks, and then, ah. uh and, and then said, "Well, we're we're locking down the Capitol too." That's a good point. Well, is that a, a ele- does that rise to the level of an executive, uh, like an emergency executive order? Was did he really have the power to do that even for those other programs? Uh, I, I think he did. You know, if the if it's, uh, uh, an executive decision, um, they you know they have the power to figure out what laws they're going to enforce and what laws they're not going to enforce. It's like, you know. Cops don't have to arrest everybody they see jaywalking. Well, yeah, that's good. Yeah, that's a good point. What would you like to see, um, Russell? Well, I mean, I mean, you know, purely from a, you know a cash flow perspective, um, you know, we we don't we actually haven't paid it because I say we just got the um, the bill a month ago. I know several people have been getting these letters previously. To me, and now there's going to be obviously other restaurants getting it subsequently. All right, so it's not a refund yet. It's just like not a refund for me, but for others, they they have paid. I know a couple of other people have taken the position my the amount's small enough that I'll pay it, and then and then oh. deal with it another day. Oh. But but you're given our location in our, in our Kokako location because you know, our white Papa location didn't didn't receive you know, a significant amount, but our Kokako location did. Uh, because obviously uh, we're right here in town, and um, that one had a, a, a major drop off in revenue in the eighty percent region uh, wow. during during this time. And of course, you know, we still had to pay our we still had to pay our landlord and our banks and our employees and all that sort of stuff. So, um, so we still had to pay all that. We still had to pay the cash. So, so, so the money, I'd I'd literally like not to have to pay it, and, and even more so because just. This past week, uh, minimum wage just went up too. Yeah, and without going off a tangent on minimum wage, um, you know, <laughs> so the, the restaurant business, you know, it, it, it's unfortunate the gross misunderstanding of how minimum wage works in the yeah. restaurant business because of our our servers are paid minimum wage, but they pull in about between fifty and ninety thousand a year, but they make minimum wage, so we're we're increasing their pay at the expense of. You know, the, the yeah. people, who, you know, the, the back house people who are making 17, 18 now already. Uh, have to, so we have to go pay the people who are already making the most money, more money for the minimum wage. So it's, it's grossly misunderstood. 
So not only is not only do I don't want to pay that, I'm also suffering about an increase of four or five percent cost on labor um, as a result of this most recent um, this recent minimum wage cost. So even more so now, do I not want to have to come out of pocket for for this money um, because we're still adjusting to uh, the new realities of you know five percent higher costs? And as I mentioned earlier, our profit margin is you know, zero to 5% in any particular period. So the minimum wage increase has just evaporated our profit margin for the whole of 2024. So we have to raise prices and, and so on and so forth. So, so yeah, so. And then you got inflation, which nobody has any control of around here. Exactly. So, you know, so now to have our own <laughs> tax department coming after us or something. Yeah. Which we, which we view as, you know, as, as you guys have articulated is just, you know, on the face of it, just, you know, completely different from their prior treatment of similar monies. But you've challenged that, or you've asked them to reconsider, or how, what, what have you done about that? Yes, well, well actually, uh, that's how I know Tom, because I reached out to Tom um, about it. And, and Tom, what's your, what's your position now on wh where do you think it should go from here? Um, I mean, what have been, you know, I, I, I do, uh, in, in my um, day job, but I represent some clients, including including Highway N, and uh, including who? Oh, Highway N, including, including Highway N. Yeah, this is Russell's company, and uh, our our position for the record is this is unfair. Uh, you can't do this, tax department, and if you don't do it, we'll take you to court. Is there any precedent for something like this? Is this happening around the country, anywhere else in other states? Uh, we, we, we are not aware of any state that's taxing RRF except us. Wow. That's, that's, uh, amazing. I mean, most, uh, most states have sales tax, uh, and, right. and, and RRF, uh, it, it as as a grant is not something you sell. So, uh, how would that work if you had a sales tax? How would have that have worked for a company like Highway Inn? What would that process have been in terms of putting aside money for to cover the sales tax or whatever? They wouldn't even have to worry about that, right? No. Um, sales tax normally doesn't apply to stuff like that. It it applies to like you know, of course the the meals that they sell. And and the and the, you know, would put a a, a charge on the, uh, on the register to to cover the sales tax collected and remit it to you know the state collect uh, the state who wants it. Um, that, that's that's what they do in in sales tax states. They do that here to collect the GET. Um, like pretty much any other business does. So there's there's not not a whole lot of. Uh, a lot of difference in terms of the tax on the uh, revenue from you know customer meals, but this. So I'm about about the the other program that's getting taxed, um, the SVOG one. Um, I'm told that um, from the figures I have here, they 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 that that amounted to uh, 144 million dollars in Hawaii that they that they handed out. Uh, only 78 companies like uh polynesian cultural center that kind of like those kind of companies such as robert's holding robert hawaii pc services and that amounted to uh um, meaning the average company was about 101 million point eight 1.8 million and so their average bill was seventy three thousand eight hundred. have you heard anything from these people um complaining about their latest surprise in the mail um so far, no, but have you heard anything, Russell, about SVUG? No, no, I haven't. I went, they're just like eating it. Perhaps we ought to look into that for a future episode. Yes. So maybe, they haven't been, with maybe they haven't been, haven't had a letter yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Maybe they're maybe still, they maybe they haven't been audited yet. Right. Maybe they're going after the restaurants first, but. <laughs> Russell, how would this how is this going to affect you? I mean, is this going to run you out of business, or will I it mean, I'm I'm just going to have to borrow money to pay it. 
um, or go on a payment plan and and pay it if if we lose and we were forced to pay it. Um, but again, like I say, it just means that you know, we just basically operate in the black or you know break even for the next you know six six months. Well, I want to say we have to obviously adjust our adjust our back accounts, but from a cash flow perspective, we're just going to have to borrow to, um, you know, which is going to cost money as well in today's high interest rate environment in order to get enough working capital to be able to, you know, carry on. So, yeah, had this, had this happened, you know, not at this time, uh, there may be, you know, by the time we've adjusted prices, you know, given the new reality of all the inflation and the wage increases I was talking about. Uh, you know, all restaurateurs are very concerned about um, you know, the cash position and what's going to happen to the demand with increased prices in 2024. And this is just another another unnecessary um, hurdle we have to we have to um, cross. That's yeah, darn right. I don't think it will put us out of business, but it's definitely going to hurt. Well, that's good news. I, 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 as we know, Hawaii's not known for being a business friendly state and, and, and a failure to back down on this issue would kind of cement that reputation. I'm I, just so our re, just so our viewers out there know, um, why highway in, uh, like I said, does serve, uh, it does cater to native Hawaiian, uh, tastes and they ship food to people all over the country. Uh, Mike, I don't know if you want to show that, 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 that slide, uh, about their business, but uh, let's give a plug for you to see, you know, uh, thank you. people out there. <laughs> yeah, that's some of our vacuum sealed uh, Kahlua pig and Lao Lao's there. That, uh, yeah, yeah, stuff that people from know, the Hawaiian community on the mainland, anyone who has uh, sweet feelings for home sweet home. Tom, uh, as we come to a close, is there anything else you'd like to say? No, we just uh, hope that uh, our our lawmakers and our people in you know, the, the powers that be do the right thing. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you, everybody. Uh, I'm Mark Coleman with uh, the co-host and with the Grassroots Institute, Tom Yamachika, Tax Foundation of Hawaii, and R Russell Ryan, CFO for uh, oh, Highway Inn, a wonderful restaurant there in Waipau and Kaka'ako. Uh, and if you like this program, please hit like and subscribe to Think Tech Hawaii. Stay tuned for following programs and We'll see you next time, hopefully, two weeks from now. Aloha.